Let's examine velocity in polar coordinates. First, let's identify some important relationships. That is, the time derivatives of the unit vectors r hat and theta hat. I actually derived these relationships in the previous video. You can find the previous video if you click on the link in the description below. So now let's get started. Using these definitions, we're actually going to find an expression that expresses the velocity vector in terms of these unit vectors. So we're, we're talking about purely in the polar coordinate system. We're going to abandon the Cartesian coordinate system, and we're just going to look at the polar coordinate system. First of all, I want to draw a diagram. And that diagram is going to tell us what the position vector is like in the polar coordinate system. So let's start off with the origin. This is the origin of our coordinate system. And this is the location that we are talking about. So it could be the location of a particle, and it could be the location of a particle going on some kind of trajectory. That trajectory could be going around some kind of center of rotation, or it could be just whizzing around over here somewhere. So we want to describe this using polar coordinates. And particularly, we're interested in the velocity of that particle. But we don't want the, uh, the velocity of the particle in terms of i hat and j hat, which are the unit vectors for Cartesian coordinates. We want the velocity in terms of these guys, r hat and theta hat. So let's get started. We need to draw a vector from the origin to that particle. And I'm going to call this vector r. And it's a vector quantity called r. And that is the position vector. So r with an arrow on top, that is the position vector. We need to differentiate that, uh, not, not as in differentiate as in do the derivative, but as in we need to make a distinction between r with an arrow on top and r hat, which is the unit vector. So the unit vector is pointing in the same direction. Right? These guys both point in the same direction. But this guy has a magnitude of 1. This guy doesn't have a magnitude of 1. It has a magnitude that tells you how far away the object is from the origin. So we can actually write this as the vector r is r, just the scalar quantity, times r hat. So that's how we're going to represent this in polar coordinates. So we actually don't need to explicitly state the angle. Why is there no theta over here? Well, this guy actually depends on theta. So the direction of this radial unit vector is always going to point towards this object. The object that we're interested in, that's where this guy is pointing towards. And this is just a scalar that tells you the radial distance from the origin. So this radial distance, or the magnitude of this vector, is r. And r hat is the unit vector that points along the radial direction. So this actually has uh, dependence on theta. It depends on the cosine and the sine of theta. So indirectly, uh, this actually depends on the angle. And if you imagine the angle, the angle actually uh, is right over here. This is the angle theta. But we're not explicitly writing it because we're choosing a coordinate system that is convenient and it moves with the particle. If the particle is going around over here, this coordinate system is going to move with the particle. Now what we want to do is we want to study how the position changes. What is the time derivative of the position vector? That is the velocity vector. So how is this going to change? Well, there's going to be a component. So if we, if we draw both of uh, these unit vectors, there's going to be a perpendicular unit vector that is theta hat. So this is theta hat. That's in the direction of, oh, I'll draw that little uh, hat a bit better. That is in the direction of increasing theta. So this is in the direction of increasing theta, because theta increases as we move over here. And these guys are perpendicular to each other. So that is the unit vectors that we're using. And so what, what is actually going to happen? We're going to have a change. There could potentially be a time dependence, and there could be a radial uh, component, and there could be a tangential component. So there's going to be a component along this direction, and there's going to be a component along this direction. And what we're actually going to find is that that's going to be the radial velocity and the tangential velocity. We're going to have two components to the velocity. It's exactly the same as uh, in Cartesian coordinates. You also have two components. You have the x component and the y component. You can write that as x dot and y dot. And those multiply i hat and j hat. But over here, we're going to actually multiply these unit vectors. And these unit vectors are specifically designed for polar coordinates. So let's uh, explicitly take the time derivative of this guy. And we're actually going to use this relationship over here. So what we need to do is we need to define the velocity as so I'll write velocity as v with an arrow on top. An arrow uh, indicates that this is a vector 
and it has both magnitude and direction, just like the position vector. So what we want to do is we want to define this as the time derivative of the position vector. That is the definition of velocity. And this is the same as the time derivative of this expression that we've written down over here, r times r hat. So what we have is the time derivative of r times r hat. So now what can we do with this? We have a product of two things, and we're taking the derivative. So we're going to use the product rule for differentiation. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of r. We can call that r dot. This is the, uh, the uh, notation for the time derivative. We can just put a little dot above, and that is shorthand notation. So we don't have to write dr dt. So we have r dot, and that's going to be multiplied by r hat. But then we also have to take another term where we differentiate this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write that as r times, I'll explicitly write this so we can see uh, and make a big distinction. This is the derivative of r hat with respect to time. So what's going on over here? Here we're taking the derivative with respect to r, oh, actually the derivative with respect to time of r, so we're differentiating r, and we're not differentiating r hat. Then in this term, we are leaving r alone and we're just differentiating r hat. So the derivative gets applied to r and then onto r hat. And that is how we apply the product rule for differentiation. Now, what is this? Here's a reason why I wrote this guy over here. So the derivative of r hat with respect to time is theta dot, theta dot times theta hat. So I'll write that underneath. So what we're going to have is r dot times r hat. That's going to remain the same. We're not going to change that part. But we will have to change this. We're going to have r times theta dot times theta hat. So we have r times theta dot times theta hat. So what do we have over here? I'll put this in a big box because this is the most important uh, equation in this video. So this guy goes in its own special box. This is the velocity vector in polar coordinates. We have a radial component and we also have a tangential component. Let's see what this actually means. So this part over here, this is in the radial direction. That is along the same direction that the position vector is pointing. But this guy over here is in the perpendicular direction. So it's not pointing in the same direction as the position vector, it's pointing along the tangent line. So if you imagine this is sitting on some kind of circle, this is along the tangent to that point on the circle. So this little point over here, uh, th or this little arrow that I've drawn over here, that actually corresponds to this term over here. That is the tangential velocity. So we have r times theta dot, and that is in the theta hat direction. So we've got the theta hat direction. That's the same theta hat that's down over here. And this little component over here, that is r dot times r hat. So that is in the radial direction. So what do these guys actually mean? This is telling us the velocity along the radial direction, and this is telling us the velocity along the tangential direction. The radial direction is pretty uh, simple. This is analogous to Cartesian coordinates. If you have Cartesian coordinates, what does this look like in Cartesian coordinates? Well, we have the velocity vector is x dot times i hat plus y dot times j hat. So these dots are just the time derivatives. So the time derivative of the x component uh, times, uh, times i hat plus the time derivative of the y component times j hat. And this is how you can split velocity up into Cartesian coordinates. So this is analogous to these guys. There's just a time derivative of the coordinate. And what we're looking at over here is r. r is just the coordinate and tells you how far away you are from the origin. It's the radial distance away from the origin. But what's going on over here? Here we have r, and then we have theta dot. So it's not a simple relationship where you just have theta dot times uh, theta hat. Right? This r is over here. So what we're actually seeing is that if you're further away, there is more of an effect. So a given theta dot value has more of an effect if it's further away. So just think about that. If you are close to something that is spinning, this tangential uh, velocity is not going to be as big as if you were moving uh, really far away from the point where you're spinning. So if you imagine you're on a merry-go-round, if you're close to the center and you're moving with the same theta dot, you've got the same angular uh, velocity, then that tangential velocity is going to be different for different distances. 
So someone on the edge of the merry-go-round is going to be whizzing around very, very fast. But someone standing close to the center, they're just going to be slowly rotating. But as you move away, as your radius gets bigger and bigger, you're going to be moving faster and faster. So that is what this r is, is telling us over here. So it scales with a factor of r. So the further you are away, the bigger your tangential velocity if you keep your theta dot constant. So for a given theta dot, and theta dot is often written as omega. That's the angular velocity. So this theta dot is just the angular velocity. That's how the angle is changing with respect to time. But this guy, r times theta dot, that is the tangential velocity. That is a component of this velocity vector. And it's how you're changing in the tangential direction. So if you're going around in a circle, right? I'll draw a circle over here. If you're going around, so this is the center of rotation. If you're going around in a circle, uh, you will have no change in, uh, change in the radius. So that means r dot is equal to 0. So if r dot is equal to 0, you're stuck on a circle. And you will just have a tangential velocity. And that tangential velocity is actually going to be determined by your radius and your angular velocity. So if you imagine your, your angle is changing, you're going to have some kind of theta dot. And you're also at some radial distance r. So you've got some r theta dot. And that is the tangential velocity. That's, uh, we can call that v sub t, or the tangential velocity. And another way of writing this is r times omega. You might have seen this in uniform circular motion. r times omega is the tangential velocity. And omega is the same as theta dot. So it is how the angle changes with respect to time. So what we have over here is r times omega. That's the tangential velocity. And this is the angular velocity. So that's an important distinction. Angular velocity is the same if, if you uh, are fixed. So if you have something that's rotating, everything is going to have the same angular velocity. So if you're on that merry-go-round, every point has the same angular velocity. But the tangential velocity is not the same. If you go further out, your tangential velocity grows. And it grows linearly with r. So the further you are away, the bigger it is. So if, my, if I'm spinning over here, my arms are very close to my center of rotation. That's not a very fast rotation. It's not a very big uh, tangential velocity. But if I move my arms out, then just a little bit of rotation uh, actually corresponds to a very large tangential velocity relative to this. See, this over here, that's a slow moving object. And then this is a fast moving object just by increasing the distance away from the center of rotation. But I've kept the angular velocity the same. So the angular velocity is the same. That's because my arm, every part of my arm is actually attached. So it's a rigid body that's rotating. So that's what, what happens when theta dot is constant. So what can we actually see over here? This gives us a lot of insight into rotations. Rotations in two dimensions. So if we're just interested in the two-dimensional universe. Some of these ideas then extend into three dimensions, but then we have to modify our coordinate system. We have to either deal with cylindrical or spherical coordinates. But this velocity vector is very important. This is how you break up the velocity vector into its radial and tangential components. And this is also how it compares to the Cartesian coordinate version that we've got written down here. So this is the velocity uh, vector in polar coordinates. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the acceleration vector. If you can find that video, if you click over here.